people can uh, watch this thing. And let me also uh, have to make sure I get the audio turned down once the live stream starts because it's going to it's going to start. Uh, uh, well, we'll wait. Come on, live stream. Go, go. Uh, uh, oh, there's Charles Wallace. Hey, Charles, how are you this evening? I'm doing great. Yeah, I'm still waiting for the uh, video to kick in. Ah, hey, there's Rob. We haven't talked to Rob in a while. There we go. Now let me let me go up here and oh, okay, the uh, speaker is turned off, so that's fine. All right, so now we are uh, slowly getting a uh, a uh, minion here, as they say in the Jewish religion. So, David, how have you been, by the way? I hear you've been out of town looking for work and stuff. Yes, I I still follow Phil's advice. As he told me like a six weeks ago that cheese has moved. So I'm looking for another another jobs. I spent a week in Iowa. Yeah. Uh, try to get my CDL license. Yeah. And uh, it didn't happen for me. Yeah. But I met many, many people who got laid off, who lost <laughs> their benefits, retirements. Wow who try to get CDL because economy sucks and uh, I've heard so many stories like my roommate uh, was a guy who who worked 33 years for CVS yeah and they just got rid of him because they don't want to pay him money because he was already manager and they just laid him off what do you mean CVS like the 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 drug stores yes drug store yeah oh after. So it's not it's not that easy, Phil. Uh, you know, uh, it's, well, it's very I, I difficult. Somebody, I, I know. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Somebody's trying to call me right now. I'm gonna have to decline their <laughs> call. No, because they're calling in on one of the previous lines that they called in on. Uh, if you want to call us, let me let me t just tell people this. If you want to call us, it's important that you call us fresh. In other words, go to Great American Broadcast on your contacts list. And dial us from there. Don't go to where you last had us on on uh, your computer and dial us up from the group you were with. Because when that happens, then everybody gets hung up on. Boomtown Rat 1959. Hello, Boomtown Rat. Hello. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and and uh, Boomtown Rat is a name for who? Um, I loved it because I love the band. Oh, I see. Okay, you love the band. Okay, good. Good for you. Anyway, how you doing, Rob? I haven't seen you in a while. I hear you've been working your ass off. Busy, busy, busy. Yeah. I spent this whole week in classes again. Classes? Yeah, studying code. PowerShell code. Oh, really? Fun, fun, fun. Gee, uh, you know, I wish Miranda were here. Maybe the two of you could talk in PowerShell code. She could help me big time. I was learning about expressions and values and keys and blah. <laughs> Not fun. <laughs> Not fun. No, and, and, and it's just as boring here as it was there. <laughs> and why are they teaching you that? Um, it's where every, th I'm an infrastructure guy. I'm not a coder. I'm not a, like, she's a developer. I'm, I work with developers, but I'm more of an infrastructure guy. I build systems, right? Yeah. But it, it, the business is moving towards everybody learning this underlying code so everything can be automated. And if you don't learn it, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be shit out of luck at some point because you're just going to be left behind. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, so let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Um, um, is it harder than stuff you've had to learn before or just like anything else you've had to learn before? Well, for me, it's harder because I don't think like a developer. I don't think like a programmer. You've got to think in these baby steps. You've got to, you've got to get the expressions in the right order. You've got to do, you know, it's like algebra. You, yeah. You've got, and I wish... I wish that uh, Miranda would call in because she could explain it better than me. You're dealing with parentheses, and so you want a math expression to happen before the next thing happens, and you're storing that in a variable, and then you take that variable and you and you use it later in the code, and it's just, it's brutal. I I mean, a whole week of that, I just want to pull my hair out of my head. Wow, it's brutal. It's hard for me to learn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, wow. Uh, I wouldn't. I, I, 
at huh? 57. You know, uh, I, some of the they, it was in our offices that they brought the teacher in and we had a conference room and the younger guys, the 20 somethings and the early 30 somethings, they're just eating up and spitting out. And I remember I used to do that. But at 57, you, you know what happens as you get older? How old are you, David? 39. How much? 39. 39. Oh, well, you're still a young punk kid. But what I've found as you get older, I'm sure, Jim, you found this out, is I think it's that your brain is already crammed with too much stuff. And so you've got to find room for this new stuff. And that's why it's harder to learn. It could be. But I think part of it is it's just not in it. You have to have a there's a sense of of how a developer and a programmer thinks yeah, that is yeah. different from the way other people think. And you have to have that in you to, to th you know, I'm good at, I learn the syntax. I learn, if, if I sit there with somebody and they say, okay, what's the next step? Oh, well, they ask a question and I could answer it. But when I'm faced with looking at it, I stare at it and go, uh, I don't know what to do next. It's too wide open. It's, it's I'm sure Miranda could give a better explanation of it. Yeah. It's just yeah. too wide open. There's, you could go anywhere. I'm used to working with, I have to do this first, and i got to build this server. I've got to put on this operating system. I've got to, you know, connect them this way. And I know what I have to do. With programming, it's all interpretation. It's very difficult. Wow. Well, I'm glad I don't have to learn that. I mean, I, I you know, it's funny. I used to be able to work my way around a computer pretty damn well. And now when there's something new, it, I actually have to have somebody come down and show me how it's done. You know, I, 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 for instance, when I had to create the, what's called RSS code to generate an XML file, which is used for iTunes and for like the, the GabNet on demand that you see on our page and so on, I had no idea how to do that. I had no idea what an XML file was or how it worked and whatever. I'm glad I did because it, it, it can be used in any number of ways once it's been generated. But, right. you know, it, 10, 15, 20 years ago, maybe long, uh, around that time, you tell me about an XML file, and I boom, 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 it would all make sense to me, you know? So, right, well, and that's exactly the, yeah. you know, I could see the, the, the wheels turning with the people in the room, the younger guy, the 20 years younger. Yeah. You know, I could see the wheels turning, and they're asking the right questions, and I'm sitting there going, man, I, I'm just, I don't even know, any questions? I don't even know what kind of questions to ask. I, I really need to just... Yeah. I, I don't even know if the right question to ask because I don't even know how far off I am. Do you find you have that problem, David? You were saying, you know, you've been having problems with finding jobs and work and stuff like that. Is is getting you uh, now you went to uh, where was it? Chicago, was it? No, it was Iowa. Iowa. And you went there for what specifically? To get commercial driving license. A commercial driving license. Okay. Yes. Was there any part of that that was difficult for you to understand? No, no. Everything was very easy, mm -hmm. but on a fourth day, my le left leg turned to be purple. They took me to the hospital and they told me that I need operation on my left leg. Wow. What do you have? Phlebitis? No, varicose veins. Oh, varicose veins. Yes. So you wanted to become what? A truck driver, right? Yes. Because and, you ha and you have varicose veins. Uh, that, uh, uh, you, you're not supposed to have varicose veins when you're driving. You get hemorrhoids. That's what that's what truck drivers get. Yes, I understand. But the uh, <laughs> problem, like, to be a mechanic nowadays, mm -hmm. it's not as it used to be, because after 15 years of experience, I'm making less and less money because I got these young kids from tech schools coming to my workplace to my workplace and they are willing to do it for less money well wow. you know so I, I i'm making less money than i was making like 10 years ago well talk to talk to phil here he's he, he can give you an answer to that yeah one. yeah, yeah. Phil, I, I cannot wait for his advice <laughs> <laughs> i can only give you the advice that churchill gave his alma mater it was a short speech and he said never give up never give up persevere and, it, uh, it was about war, Jeff. It wasn't about workplace. I gotta tell you something, Jeff. It was about I, life. I gotta tell you something, no, Phil. No, Phil, it, Phil, it, Phil. Your, your yeah. brain damage. I'm sorry, <laughs> Phil. Uh, you know, yeah. it, 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 when it's cold, uh, you could pee on your foot, and it would feel really good. But it's not practical. 
and, and telling people about persevere, keep pushing ahead. Uh, it's kind of like ask, telling a hamster, just get going on that wheel. Just keep going. Something's going to happen eventually. There's only because one way to fail, Alex, and that's to give up. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah. you, you, know, you no, may not I, be I, I, in, a, in a state of mind to accept something like that now, but it's the basic well, truth. Well, I've, I've often said that, that the, the way you succeed is by not giving up. I mean, Rob right. can answer that. It can go along with that in my business. That you know, what's the difference between the people that? Well, I used to say this: the difference between the people who, who made it in the business and the people who didn't were the ones who, who made it didn't give up. But they right. didn't also didn't have kids like me, and they didn't have they just had only themselves to worry about like me, and so it was a lot easier. If you've, Times got a, change. if you've got a family, you know, if, I, if I had had a family uh, back mm -hmm. in the day, I got to tell you, uh, bottom line, by the way, we have a full house now. Thank you okay. very much, everybody. Uh, if back in the day I had had a, had a family, say when I first started out in this business, I'd probably be selling shoes today. You well, know? I, you know. I, I understand what you're saying. Uh, I was trying to give David uh, a sage advice. He's 39. You know, I don't know if I could do it again either. I don't know if I could do what you're doing, which uh, is uh, so far you've put a year of, uh, of painstaking work into developing what you're developing. And, uh, you know, if anybody uh, uh, should be applauded, it's you. Uh, I, I am, what, 15, 20 years younger than you, 15 years, I think. And um, uh, I don't know that if uh, what I was doing failed, whether I had it in me to build it again. Mm. Uh, it, it, you know, but people rise to the occasion. They do what they have to do, uh, you know, when they're challenged. Well, I'm, uh, you know, I was mentioning earlier, I do this basically to stay alive. You know, I, I don't want to become a Regis Philbin or Larry King, basically. You know, I'll I mean, just take his money. <laughs> well, you know, I, I know Regis has a lot of money. I don't know that Larry King does, actually, to be honest Phil, with you. Phil, if I may. Yes. Uh, I, listened, I listened to you, like, earlier about your carpet company, that you are a very successful man, but not everybody can be like you. you hey, know? I've had my ups and downs. Uh, success uh, is, is only uh, is a fleeting moment. Uh, you always have ups and downs, and uh, you know it's uh, you know nothing. It, it's not a. It's not something that just goes up and up. I, I see Jeff's got his hand up there. I yes, know Jeff. Jeff. Yeah, Alex, you bring up a great point. Um, you had no kids, and you, I guess, followed your passion, which of course is radio. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm the same way. I have no kids. I can do whatever I want. And, and is it the people that are married and have kids that are like trapped and go? Oh shit! I've well, got to make this much money. What, Whereas people like myself and I guess you with no kids, you go, no, I'm going to follow my dreams. As long as they have enough money to uh, pay the rent and uh, put food on the table, I'm cool. I mean, it kind of sucks, but is that the way it is? Well, you know, uh, a long time ago, I remember a particular incident. I was working in Minneapolis, and I got into a fight with my boss, who said, "Never do that again on the air." Which was a, a in, uh, I came up with the idea of doing a talent contest on the radio, and we did it. And the boss felt that that didn't fit the format of their serious talk radio station. And I said, there are a lot of ways to do talk besides talk, you know. And I mean, and it happened in an odd way. I mean, but people were calling up and doing singing and doing impressions and tap dancing on the radio. And it was wonderful. And he told me, don't ever do that again. I said, well, I guess I'll be I better find a radio station where I can do it. Take your radio station and shove it. Yeah. Now, I, all I had at home was a wife. And she could work anywhere, okay? And, and I went home and told her, you know, and she said, well, we'll find another job somewhere for you, you know? Well, we didn't have, if I had had kids, I wouldn't have told them to take the job and shove it. I mean, mm -hmm. I might have started looking for another job, but I wouldn't have told them to take that job and shove it because I would have realized that, well, I have a larger uh, job on my hands than a radio show. Mm -hmm. um, the strangest thing about that incident, though, was as I was walking out of the station, the secretary said to me, oh, here, you have a message. And I took the paper and I, I wadded it up and put it in my pocket. And then I went home and I told my wife what I had done. 
And uh, as I'm looking out the window, and it's snowing in Minneapolis that night, and looking at the snow coming down, wondering what I was going to do with my career now, uh, I pull the piece of paper out, and it's from the pro a program director in Chicago who wants me to go to work for him. So, you know, uh, that's the way life works. But all I'm saying is I would not have done that. Uh, if I if I if I had kids and I and I think Rob you can pretty much attest that you don't have kids do you no I don't No. so you you kind of do have a certain freedom although you know you I have a huge mortgage now oh, okay. <laughs> and I feel tied to that unfortunately <laughs> um, it's so it's a fear of mine it's definitely a fear of mine to be unemployed really for really? a length of time because you hear you know uh, then look and I was gonna say this to David um, when I turned 40, David, is when I switched careers. I spent the first bunch of years in radio full-time. Then I moved to television full-time. And then when I turned 40, I was working at Court TV. I was a director there. And I got to the point where NBC was buying it. Who was buying it? They were gonna, we were going to lose our jobs. And I got to the point where I'm saying, I'm 40 years old. Do I want to be overnights at MSNBC or Fox directing their you know, late-night cut-ins? With Monday and Tuesday off. And so I, I, I mean, I don't know what education you have, David, but I looked around and I said, you know, technology is where everything is going. And so I spent about 5000 bucks, and I didn't know a server from, you know, uh, I didn't even know what a computer was really past my laptop or my desktop at the time. Yeah. But yeah. I realized that there was a lot of jobs in this area. And right now, like, IT security is just huge. I don't know what your background is. I don't know if you have an aptitude for it. But I took, like, $5,000, and I put it into school. And the minute I got out of school, the phone started ringing. And from years and years of broadcasting, where, God forbid, you get a call from somebody you send a job or a resume to or a tape to or whatever, the phone started ringing like crazy for all these positions. And since then, until recently anyway, mm -hmm. the phones haven't stopped ringing or the emails haven't stopped coming yet. So the idea is to put yourself in a place where the, there is a lot of, there's, there's work. There's, you know, there, there's security right now is huge. If you have any aptitude towards technology, I think that's probably a great place to be right now. Yeah. Okay, I'll try. Uh, hey, IT security, you said? IT security. They're always looking for people. If you can become a CISS, yeah. I think it's yeah. a CISSP. I think that's the acronym. Oh, wait, oh, um, oh, I've got somebody for you right now, uh, uh, uh. Rob, by the way, we're getting a little hissing noise from you tonight. I don't know Is where that, that comes from. Tur turn yourself off for a second. Tur yeah, it goes away. Yeah. I, 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 now, now it's gone. Now it's gone. Could be something Skype-wise. Uh, we, uh, we have Miranda here. And uh, uh, what was the name of that new code you had to learn? No, uh, I spent the last week in PowerShell 4. Do you, you know, know PowerShell, PowerShell Miranda? 4, Miranda? No, I don't because I don't use Windows. Oh. oh you don't use any Windows. Oh, it's a sloppy But it's all this, you know, it's the same thing. It's a programming language. And I was, I'm suffering with it. I am. It's, you know, in my career, everybody, I've been looking for work. And every, the first thing they ask, and I'm an I'm a infrastructure guy. The first thing they ask is, how are your PowerShell skills? And I go, how many, how many what? No PowerShell skills. Thank you very much. Next. What do you use so, where you are, Miranda? Uh, Linux? I really just use whatever the best tool is for the job. I, I mostly uh, work on Salesforce.com, so uh, a lot of Apex. Um, it's, yeah, like we all understand what you're talking about. Well, By the way, do you also speak Martian? Yeah. <laughs> That's why I kind of... Yeah. <laughs> well, look what I'm wearing to. But by the way, look what I'm wearing tonight. You see, you see the hat. Hold on, I gotta. Oh, I think you got. I can't see it. No, yeah, your, your, your video is isn't that clear. Huh, really? Yeah. 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 No. It's all pixelated. It's Daffy. Oh, it's, it's, it's Daffy Duck. Daffy it's Daffy, Daffy Duck. Duck. Yeah, and look at my shirt. I think it says Bazinga. It says Bazinga. Wow. Oh, uh, <laughs> Big Bang Theory. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not clear to you people tonight? Not, not at the moment. 
Uh, not uh, here, no. Really? No. You're a little fuzzy. Well, wait a minute. Let me turn off my video and turn it back on again. Is it looking a little better now? Not yet. Not yet. Uh, you're, you still have the... Now you're back, but it's the same. Because I look fine to me, but anyway. Well, Alex, if you're like me, wait till tomorrow because you get better looking every day. Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> um so anyway, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm hoping that, David, that you find something because I hate to see you go back to Europe. <laughs> Thank you, Alec. You know, you're, you're far. Is there money? Have you looked to see if there are grants to get money to go to school? When my brother got let go from, he was a teamster, uh, and they got rid of his job. He was sort of just lost his, his job, and uh, he found a program whereby uh, the, he got sent to school to learn a different trade didn't cost him a dime uh -huh. now this was years ago but there are always different programs out there as well if you if you search yeah uh, i will okay um but uh, you know we, as i said we'd like to see you stay here uh let me see here uh tony how are you doing tonight oh, i'm doing okay. great enjoying my night off no oh wait a minute not charlie i said uh, tony but we'll get oh, to you I'm in sorry. a second charlie it's no that's okay uh, uh, Tony, how, how you doing? We, we're excited here. I'm going tomorrow to pick up the puppy. Uh, you know, this is a guy whose whole life is, surrounds a puppy. Oh, it's, it's exciting. Now, you know what the dilemma was? I don't know. See, uh, I, I, you know what I used to get, you know what I used to get excited about? Like, well, you're excited about this. getting laid. <laughs> well, here's my dilemma, Alex. She's, she's going to have what, a What, you're not getting laid? Dry food? What? She, she's on Perino One Dry Food because she's seven weeks. Mm -hmm. So I'm researching it. My brother and me are going to take it to the vet. I'm trying to see if that's you know, what other dry foods might be good because I don't want to take her off of it, you know. So I'm going to ask the vet. Uh-huh. Do you and know anything about dry and that's your big pro food? And that's your big problem? <laughs> this is my big problem. And I, and I bought some... David, David's looking can't. for work. Uh, uh, Rob here is trying to learn a foreign language that is, if he doesn't learn it, he's, he, he'll lose his job. Um, uh, who knows what all the rest of these people have a problem with. I mean, obviously rampant moose up in Revelstoke. And your problem is what cycle food to put your dog on. Well, right now she's going to be on Purina 1. So I went to Petco and I got my delivery. You know, you know what I hate about those fucking people at Purina? Let me tell you what I hate about them. What? I'm afraid You get yourself a new dog. He's on cycle 1. What is that? Well, they, they have I these want dry food. food. They have these various foods for various ages of dogs. And by the oh. time you get him to cycle 7, this bag is looking at you saying your dog's going to die soon. Oh, you don't even dog. She's only seven weeks. I got a toy. Uh, hold on, let me get it. You get bought it. the dog a toy? <laughs> this is what I love about this guy. I love him. I just love him. Uh, he, uh, he, his, his needs are not complex, and I wish I could live that life. Okay, here is the toy. Since we have video tonight, the people can watch. Alex, ten bucks for this thing. Ten dollars. <laughs> Do you think your dog? You know, suppose the dog rejects the toy. I hope not. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna return. I can't return it. Do you think a dog <laughs> wants to play? It's Snoopy, well, you right? Know what I'm figuring it's, I got a crate. My brother got me a crate, so I figure at night I don't want to roam around the house because she may pee on the floor. So, so at night I want to put this in the cage. Maybe you know. You're gonna. Company. I don't know, you're gonna, man. You're gonna, I think there's something to play with. She's probably gonna rip the hell out. You're gonna cage the dog up every night. Well, that's what I'm thinking, but I doubt it. She's going to be rolling around us. I think okay. I'm going to go out he, early. He, 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 you know, you have up. to. I maybe for a night. No, but you have to let her pee on the rug a couple of times so you can hit her on the nose with a newspaper and say, bad dog, and they'll learn not to pee on the uh, rug. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put the wee-wee pads in the bathroom yeah, yeah. so when she has to go, yeah. I want her to know to go in there so it's okay. Like, are you, I are you, waving, are you waving your hand, Jeff? i got to put this away. Hold on. Jeff, were you waving your hand there? Are you no, I oh. muted because I was packing a smoke of cigarettes. Oh, well, that's what you were doing. I I thought it was, you were either you were either waving at me, didn't know you were packing a pack of cigarettes, or jerking off. It looked like something like that. <laughs> if I jerk off, also I will also mute you. Oh, or mute me. <laughs> well, muting is not what you want in that case. I think you probably go off and come back. 
Uh, but anyway, so uh, so Tony uh, uh, Tony is thrilled about his his dog, and that's all yeah. we're going to hear about. I, I won't say nothing more about it. Peter. No, that's fine. I think it's wonderful you're getting a dog because your dog died, and I know how sad you were. Yeah, and, I your, was, and your brother, just, who uh, is a caring brother, went out and got you this other do- new dog. Yeah, he found the breeder and everything, so what that can, was nice. What, what, I got what, to what breed is it? Uh, it's a chocolate Labrador. Oh, English. right. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's a great dog, I think. Yeah, I don't we know. Always, I was reading on it, so it's it's a surprise. My niece doesn't know we have a dog coming, a puppy. So tomorrow, when she's done with art class, yeah, she she's gonna come over at night. So we'll have we'll have the we'll be home by. Mm. So then she'll be surprised because she thought we would have had a puppy already, but yeah, I mean, you know, she kept coming home and says, "When are you gonna get a new dog? Yeah, or a puppy?" So we didn't say, so "We yeah. don't know. We're gonna me, get one." Let me ask you a question about the chocolate laboratories. Are are they good to eat? <laughs> What's that? The chocolate Labradors. Oh, stop. <laughs> Only in China. Well, you never know. You know, you could be going through, like, the Donner Pass in California and get snowed yeah. in. And you don't want to have to eat. Like, let's say you've got your mother with you, and it's yourself and the dog. And oh. now you are you are, are up there in the mountains. Ugh. It's frozen. There's no way to get out. And somehow Sorry, you, you have to eat something oh. to survive. <laughs> I, it, it, and it's either mom or the chocolate Labrador. Which one is it going to be? Well, the dog's Never a puppy. come between a boy and his dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, yeah, he's a, only a puppy, so that would probably only get you through a couple of days. It's like veal. It's like veal. Uh, Rock in the hard spot. Love to hear the by, answer, Tony. By the way, you want to know? Do you know? You know? Remember that? Uh, what was it? What soccer team was it that got caught in the uh, in the Andes or something? Uh, snow oh, band? that was the Ethan Hawke movie, Alive. Yeah. Well, yeah you, I, forgot uh, the I, I interviewed the guys from that soccer team. Really? Yeah. Did they really eat all? I remember watching. They yeah. ate the people. Now, now yeah. I'm going to tell you something. They didn't put in the movie. What? You know how they kept sending people out to go see if they could find yeah. something somewhere and they couldn't find it? Yeah. Well, they went in every direction, they told me, except for one. Had they gone in another direction, a mile away was a hotel that was closed for the winter that had a full freezer full of food. Oh, God. They, that didn't make it. They didn't put that in the movie. Oh, my God. Yeah. I thought you were going to say a Howard Johnson song. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing tonight, Charles? How's, uh, how's, how's um, softball? I'm doing great. Uh, we had a hor- horrible storm last night, though, that, that, that fields are too wet tonight. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, here uh, we were having thunder uh, storms today. And I love, love thunderstorms because I love a good clap of thunder. It's the only clap nice I like. Nice light show. Yeah. What? A nice light show, too, with the lightning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, anyway, and uh, let's see here. Josh, how are you doing this evening? Doing good. Yeah? What are, what are you watching? You're watching something. Uh, I'm watching the game. It, what, what game is that? Uh, Cincinnati, Milwaukee. Uh-huh. And uh, you're rooting, of course, for Cincinnati. Yeah. Something's not going good with the game, Josh. It's tied at the moment. Oh, okay. Cause oh, that's you, not bad. No, because whenever he sounds down, you know, I, I usually assume uh, Cincinnati isn't doing that well. Josh, do you have money on the game? No. Do you, no. Ever, do you ever put money I on the game? I don't do that. I, I don't gamble either. I'm not, either. I'll gamble on myself, but I won't gamble on any, any externals. And Jim, how's everything up in Revelstoke tonight? Uh, we had a storm as well. Big thunder and lots of rain. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I just wanted to say to Tony, uh, we, had a, we had a yellow lab for 15 years, and it was, it was an amazing dog. Had a great life. They're, they're just wonderful. Great disposition. Mm-hmm. They, and, are they easy to train? At the age of 15, by the age of 15, she was a little tough at the end, but a little longer on the barbecue, and that was fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me. Uh, Bill, at 15, we had to build a ramp from the from the porch down to the grass because she couldn't do the stairs anymore. But. Yeah. Uh-huh. And how are the Dodgers doing, uh, Miranda? 
<sighs> well, I haven't been watching tonight, but the last couple nights they didn't do too well. Yeah. Now, do you get the? Josh was pretty happy. About I know. That I know bad. that Josh gets unhappy when Cincinnati doesn't win. Do you get unhappy when the Dodgers don't win? I mean, do you internalize it? Um, it really only affects me when I'm actually watching the game or at the stadium. Yeah. Uh, I, I've been so busy this week, I haven't watched any baseball. This it must be a busy week for computers, I guess, huh? <laughs> Rob's been busy. You've been busy. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Let me so uh, how to process that one. You know, we were talking about something last night, and, and it's, of course, now it's the story that won't go away, and that's uh, all about uh, Iraq. And uh, I just love the pile-on that the Republicans are doing on Obama on this deal. Uh, oh, we lost Oh, we lost David. He's calling back. Okay. Hi, David. Glad to have Hello. you back. Uh, they, they're really doing a pile-on on, on, on Obama, uh, not like they wouldn't anyway. But not like the uh, you know not like the pile on they did when uh, Bush started this whole debacle, yeah. you know. Um, how, how do you feel about today's developments in this, Phil? Well, uh, you know, I do know that uh, McCain and um, oh, uh, there was two, there was two other uh, major sore, Republicans. You mean the sore loser McCain? Uh, uh, that that uh, uh, you know came down and said that um, uh, all of. Uh, uh, Obama's security team should be fired for not seeing the uh, for what what's going on, but I think there's a you know rather than pointing fingers, I, I think action's uh, necessary, and uh, you know there uh, it seems as though they're coming in the ISIS, they're coming in, they're taking equipment and they're bringing it back to uh, Syria for that civil war. Uh, I wonder if they're just really running in there. I know they're taking over some cities, but I think that they're taking it over to uh, to garner the arms and, and take them back to uh, continue their uh, fight in Syria. Yeah, but they're uh, also they're moving forward to Baghdad too. You know, well, there's ar there there are arms, there's trucks, there's all sorts of stuff in Baghdad, just like Mosul and Tikrit. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, now there's 200 uh, contractors and uh, independent <laughs> contractors that are uh, surrounded right now by uh, the jihadists. And uh, what they did was they picked up the military arms that were thrown away by the Iraqi uh, uh, yeah, soldiers. The, the Iraqi soldiers, and, which were really wonderfully trained by, uh, by... Well, no, it's been two and a half years since there's been any training of Iraqi soldiers by American forces. No, 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 but I'm saying that Al-Maliki said he was going to keep... He was gonna keep uh, uh, the troops up, but somehow these troops that we, in fact, had a, had a hand in the training, uh, the minute they saw the other guys coming, took their uniforms off and handed them their guns. I mean, well, come Saddam's on. Red Guard did the same thing. It just must be uh, indicative of uh, the way they fight. But the, it might be uh, indicative of the way they want to stay alive. Well, but what's happening, uh, uh, you know, is that uh, the army base or the military base where these 200 contractors are currently located are fighting off uh, the jihadists, but they, you know, they only have so much that they can do to stand up to it. I think that uh, uh, we're going to have to launch some strikes to push these guys back. And it's not a matter of saving Baghdad or Mosul or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just allow allowing major weapons to get into the hands of the bad guys. Well, let me uh, let me ask you this. Uh, it, it seems though Al Maliki, Al Maliki or Malik, Mal what, the, yeah. the, the, the head of Iraq, <laughs> uh, it, that he um, is asking for help. Um, is he? Yes, but not from us. He's asking for help, and we may wind up asking for help from these same people. Oh, the from, Iranians? Uh, the Iranians. Well, uh, uh, and, I think and we, the may, Iranians we, may, we may actually ask the Iranians to help in it's Iraq. It's a Trojan horse. I, I, I think that if you, they wanted to put 10,000 <clears> troops in Iraq, and all that's going to do is give Iran a foothold in Iraq uh, that they didn't have uh, a week ago. And uh, I, I, I see it as a Trojan horse. Well, you see Iraq, Iran, rather. Uh, Iran a Trojan is a Trojan horse. horse, yes. Well, but if they're the only way for al-Maliki to be able to uh, find enough strength to ward off the, uh, the infidels, 
Uh, uh, well, uh, I don't know that uh, it's going to work out in the long run for him uh, because if uh, if they get their troops uh, within uh, Iraqi borders, uh, you know, first they may uh, be a help to Amaliki, but uh, right after that, they could be Amaliki's downfall. Jeff? Yeah, um, interesting. You know, my enemy's enemy is my friend. Uh, what if we do bring in Iran and Iran's... Uh, maybe takes over and settles things down. Uh, what does that say to Israel now when Ara Iran is our friend? Could that calm things in the Middle East? I don't see Iran being our friend. These people hate us. No, if, they, if we bring them in to help Iraq, to help calm Iraq, yeah, they'll take it over, but- We're not bringing them in. Uh, it's Amaliki. Uh, that uh, is, according to Alex. No, but that... also, also, there are stories going around that the United States is thinking about calling upon Iran to help. Uh, well, I didn't see, see that. I, I don't. At Drudge I, I, to begin I, with, I don't. Uh, oh, you didn't see Drudge tonight. Is that where you get all no, your I news? No, I did. I looked at Drudge <laughs> and I didn't see that. Uh, and and I, and I looked at my Washington Times. Oh. Why don't you read something like the New York Times or the Washington Post sometime? That might be good. Communist or, paper. Or Raw Story. <laughs> uh, it's a bunch of propaganda. Of course that, it's a bunch New of York propaganda. Times. Um, actually, I like the New York Times because I don't feel... I know it, you it, would. No, and no as, a, as a lefty, I don't feel it's coddling me. I just don't feel that. I don't like, for instance, MSNBC because I feel they're trying to blow me every time I watch them. You know. No, I understand, but the New York Times is just uh, playing to the left's. Uh, no, uh, maybe they maybe they are reporting the news that the the, the uh, you know all the all the news that's fit we print. It's a print. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it, it it it's getting it it's getting to be an interesting situation over there, and and uh, uh, it looks like I mean Obama is in a bad place right now because. I think the last thing Americans want to put up with is going back into Iraq. Okay? So he's got to do something short of that. Osama bin Laden said that uh, during, at the beginning of the war that Americans would not have the stomach to, uh, to stick it through and, and see it to completion. And as soon as they start seeing body bags of, of young Americans coming home, uh, they'd cut and run. And bin Laden was right. No, he wasn't right. We, we, we had 4,400 people die before we cut and ran, so to speak. Uh, but that's what he predicted. Uh, well, don't you think that part of this is their plan to just wear us down, to, to bankrupt absolutely. us? To, absolutely. You know, they keep I, us in and... They don't have uh, hundreds of thousands of soldiers uh, that they can place there. So uh, according to the art of war, what they have to do is they, uh, it's death by a thousand cuts. And so what they have to do is continually hit at, at, at all, sorts of, uh, all sorts of areas. Uh, uh, the uh, Al-Qaeda and the Taliban are waging a war that is letter perfect uh, for the type of force that they are. And, and we're not, uh, as, a, as a country, we're not reacting to it. Again, uh, to begin with, this group that uh, ISIS uh, is, uh, I can't answer whoever's calling, by the way, because they're calling on one of those group calls. Plus, we can't take any more. We have a full, a full house here in case anybody. Oh, won't. I'll drop off, Alex. No, you don't. It, it, play, no, no. Play, no. Alex, Alex yes. I, have to, I have to run. So I want to say good night and thank you all. So um, okay. have a great night. I'll be listening while I do my chores and uh, catch up to you folks next okay, time. Okay, call again, Jeff, okay? Good thank night. you. Okay, bye-bye. Right. Okay, uh, all right. So whoever was trying to call, go right ahead. Give it a try now. Uh, uh, we, are, uh, we have lost one person here. And uh, we still have a lot, a lot of people here, almost a full house. So uh, if you want to call us now at Great American Broadcast, but do not call us using a previous uh, line that you've called in on. Go to your contacts, look up Great American Broadcast, make a fresh call to Great American Broadcast. Otherwise, I get you as part of a group sometimes, and I can't put you on because all these people will have to be put on hold, and I don't want to do that just for one person. Um, uh, it's, uh, anyway, so that you know, that's a carryover from uh, from yesterday's news. Uh, we also have uh, in the news uh, a whole bunch of uh, Mexican, uh, uh, Mexican, South American kids streaming across the border. Uh, 
<clears throat> and you know probably a lot about this, Charles, because it's happening in your own state to begin with. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and it's children this time, massive amounts of children. And, of course, you know, certain people are yelling and screaming, ah, let's send them back, uh, don't let them stay here, you know. I mean, what do we do with these children? Rick Perry wants to lock them up. You might have a time slot for him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, I could do that. Um, but no, I'm just wondering, uh, uh, what, do we, um, um, what do we do with these kids? Start a choir. Huh? Start a choir. Well, whatever happened to uh, land of the free, home of the brave, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to f breathe free. Oh. And by the way, don't let those Jews in during World War II. Yeah. I know. I know what they're going to do with the kids. Uh, they, they're going to. They're going to say that they're 18. They're going to give them the vote. And they're going to say, "Why not become a Democrat?" <laughs> <laughs> you just got to dig it in, don't you? Oh, Every yeah. time, Phil. You, you know. Uh, well, treat them funny. like that. They sure to become Democrats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Well, don't worry. They'll all wind up at Home Depot, standing there waiting to mow your lawn, Phil. And making more than us. <laughs> making more than us. How much are they charging when you pick them up from there? Have you twelve bucks an hour cash? Have you picked anybody up from there? No. And I how can't, do you know I it's twelve bucks cash? I can't it's afford like, to have somebody without workers' compensation. It's, and, that's like me saying hookers only cost fifty dollars, and you chiming in and saying no, they're a hundred. You know, you begin to wonder <laughs> how you're spending your money. Well, it depends on the quality of the hooker. Yeah. Uh, so that was another big story wandering around. There were a couple of others. I'm trying to remember what they were exactly. I, I, as I say, I, 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 I never used to have to write anything down, right? But and now I'm, I'm having to. Um, but... Um, uh, oh, they say that on this whole thing in uh, in, uh, in in Iraq that uh, G George W. Bush is remaining very quiet about it. Well, he should <laughs> not comment. Uh, yeah, I would agree. Uh, and and not because uh, of his position at the beginning, but I believe the past presidents should just be that past presidents. Yeah. And uh, you know, uh, guys like uh, Clinton that are interjecting their uh, uh, their uh, ad their uh, uh, opinion all the time are, are doing nothing to to help the president that is in current yeah. office. But um, I also wanted to mention that uh, uh, Clinton's daughter. Uh, is now on a month-to-month -month contract for her six hundred thousand dollar a year job uh, cool. with uh, NBC. Uh, on a month-to-month, -month? right? Because just in case her mother becomes the president, uh, they uh, uh, they took her off her long-term contract. Really? So I guess that's, the, that's like. Well, I think they also took years from now. I, I think they also took her off because she's pregnant, isn't she? And she may need some time off. Well, that's a possibility. No, but that, that's probably you know, that's an interesting question, because what happens is if you're running for political office, you have to go off the air, uh, basically because, uh, well, you could stay on the air, but NBC would have to offer uh, her mother, uh, you know, if you were running, let's say I were running for, for president, I could remain on NBC, but every time I appeared on NBC, they'd have to offer my competitor equal amounts of time. Well, it's a bad deal. She's but, not but, running. But, but she's not running. She's the daughter. Should she be right. penalized that way because I, she's you know, the she, daughter? She's taking a pay cut if her mother gets hired because the, I think the president gets 400000 a year, and she's getting 600000 a year. She could afford to tell her mother just, hey, take a break. No, no, no. <laughs> but uh, 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 not considering that, the fact that anybody's thinking about whether she should have to quit if her mother starts running. You know, yeah. she's uh, not the one running. What? Yeah. Uh, she's not the one running. You know, yeah, she, but, uh, and, and just, I, so what she, I read was it was because of her mother's uh, candidacy well, that but, uh, they but, put her on a month to month. It would, and so they could get rid of her if her mother were running and they wouldn't have to put her on the air. Right. But uh, she shouldn't have to suffer loss of job because she happens to hold the same name as her mother. Does is she that, have a high Q rating? Maybe she, this is a way to get rid of her. Maybe they want to get rid of her and this is a way to get rid of her. I mean, uh, what, uh, you know, they're going to, uh, for a year, a couple of years, are going to uh, write off uh, DeWitt Clinton as the creator of the steamboat? I mean, because his name is Clinton? I mean, I just, it doesn't make, that doesn't make sense to uh, me. 
But what I did hear... Weren't the Huntsman girls on TV when their father was running for president? I don't think so. They were getting... Bush's daughters were getting into trouble when her father was running for president. No, no, no. We're talking (laughs) talking about Huntsman. Oh. He was talking about Huntsman. Uh, I don't know if they were working yet in broadcasting when their father was running. Uh, I do know that Jenna Bush, for instance, is on NBC as a... uh, Not only a correspondent, but also I think they use her on the Today Show now as... Occasionally, as a co-host, uh, and, and, and I've watched her, and she has absolutely no talent whatsoever. <laughs> you know, I hate to say this about one of the Bush sisters, but if I was going to say it about any of them, it would be her. Who's she blowing? She does know how to party. Yeah. <laughs> I think she's a mother now, though, isn't she? Once you become yeah. a MILF, it's, uh, you don't talk about uh, former blowjobs. You know. Uh, depends if you're on red tube. Huh? Yeah. It depends. What is that? That red tube. It's, uh, it's got plenty of MILFs. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, how uh, it, it, Have you heard, uh, Miranda, that uh, there's another thing? Harrison Ford, they, they now say his ankle may be, it may be worse than uh, they expected, that they had to put... Uh, metal screws and plates in his foot. Yeah, I did see some things coming down today. And they're going to have to shoot him from, like, the waist up, a la Julia Louis-Dreyfus when she was pregnant on the Seinfeld show. (laughs) Uh, You didn't know, realize uh, that? Uh, If you look at the old Seinfeld shows. Do you know how old I was when that was airing? Oh, go ahead. Make (laughs) me feel horrible. Go ahead. (laughs) I, I know I was. I just want to know, just for reference, just for reference, how old were you when Seinfeld was on? Well, now, now I need to actually look up what years it was actually running. It was but, a '90s show. The '92 so. to uh, uh, so 2000 it's something. Started, oh, '98. It started in '98. No, it, it started, ended '98. It, it ended in '98. Where yes. have the years gone? For crying out loud. <laughs> Here, I, will, I will go to the very first episode. Yeah, which, which would be probably 92. It says 1990. That's yeah, weird. Yeah, 1990. Yeah. Eight okay. Years. Okay, so I was nine years old when the series started. Uh huh. Okay. I would have been 18 when it completed. Well, you weren't even alive when the first Star Wars came out, okay? No, I wasn't. <laughs> I still love it. <laughs> Get off the back. <laughs> Star Trek, Star Trek. You weren't around for Star Trek when it happened. No, I wasn't. But I did stay up late watching Channel 13 almost every night. Yeah. So that's Star Trek here. What is all that noise? It's got, I think, yeah. No, it's some, some, some. It's a ball game. Uh, oh. Oh, that was me. I got I got the radio on the hockey game. Can I let you go during overtime? Oh, I'm more. I'm less important than a fucking hockey game. <laughs> I gotta go to sleep too, so I'm gonna lay down and listen to the game. Uh, all right, I'm slowly losing people here. Go I'm ahead, so leave me. I'll talk to you later. Break my heart. Go oh, ahead. Oh, I'm gonna lay down anyway and have the game on the radio. Uh, oh, okay. Just put that game on ice. But the <laughs> Rangers are gonna lose. It looks like the Kings are too big and strong. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. Right, bye. See. Huh? What? It's the Kings, uh, yeah, the, the Kings and the Rangers. Come on. Damn yeah. the sports season. Is that Sacramento? What? The Kings. Uh, no, Los Angeles. <laughs> oh. Is it the, was he listening to a Los Angeles game? In yeah. Rangers. Yeah. Yeah. In Los Angeles. Well, let's check in with the Cincinnati game. Josh? Five to five in the A's. That's a lot of the Cincinnati. Five. You didn't say who was leading. No, it's five to five. Tied. Oh, five. I thought you said nine to five. No, five to five. Still tied. Okay. What's the spread? No, I have no idea. See, he doesn't. He doesn't bet. He just enjoys the game. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do that betting deal. Really? No, I yeah. don't. That's. You, I, I don't see how you can make any money in that. I mean. It's just entertainment. Right. Yeah, well. I, mean, I don't watch it for that. I don't know people who bet money on sports constantly. They make some. The next day they lose some. The next day, you know. Well, let me. What's let me, the point? Let me bring up the 
the the fact that uh, in uh, um, that, for instance, why don't there were a whole bunch of things about you know people on steroids and things like that and how terrible that was, and I started to think about who is that really terrible for? Is it terrible for you, Josh, who watches the game, or if they're on steroids, doesn't it just make it a better game? Yeah, I guess it depends who you ask. Yeah, (laughs) but who is bothered by people being on steroids? And why do they go out and arrest people for using steroids? It's It's called roid rage. No, no, it's the people who bet on it. That's right. It's the betting people who care whether these games are, you know, all you should. It's like years ago they had these these, uh, quiz show scandals. And I said, I don't care if they're rigged. Put on a good show. And as long as they put on a good show, I'm not the one making or losing the money on the game show. But if the game show is exciting, and it's exciting because you rigged it on some level, good, you're doing something for me. But what about the the guy on steroids has has rigged it any more than the guy that's taking vitamins or uh, eats well, except, you know, he's got other problems. Well, I mean, I think, uh, 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 oh, here comes Patrick. Oh, Patrick. How are you, Patrick? Oh, I'm I'm here now. Yeah, why? What was happening? Oh, last minute shit with the uh, project. Yeah, well, did you get it done? Yeah. Yeah, I, I got it far as I could get. So. Yeah. Tomorrow is another day. You been listening to us tonight? Uh, on and off. I just heard the last couple of minutes here. Um, but I actually needed to shower and eat. So in between all of that, I was listening and, you know. So um, was there... I heard about Iraq and then uh, just about the baseball stuff. Okay. So. Any opinion on any of these things? Yeah, I think the president's in a real fucked up position right now um, where something needs to be done somehow. And uh, I agree with Phil with Iran getting involved. That's some pretty scary shit right there. Well, you know, I mean, um, uh, wouldn't that be funny if we wound up being uh, bedfellows in that situation? Uh, uh, yeah, it. it I, I'll tell you what. I would say fuck Iraq and let it go, and then bomb the shit out of it once the Iranians were in there. <laughs> and I'm serious. I mean, fuck Iran. I've said fuck Iran for a long time, and let them overrun the country. And then, I mean, if we're not going to do anything, then you turn that fucking country into glass and be done with it. Well, parts of it of of, uh, of Iraq were turned into glass, as a matter right. of fact, during the uh, first Gulf War. Um, in fact, one of the funniest lines I ever heard uh, came from Emo Phillips, the comedian, and it had nothing to do with the war. But he said that he says I was at the beach one day and there was a sign that said "No glass allowed." He said, and I wondered for a moment, and then I suddenly realized it was probably the sand because they're jealous because it's more evolved. <laughs> uh, but, uh, I, you know, I, I don't know. You know, I just, I, I, you're right. I mean, the one thing you're very right about is Obama's fucked. I mean, there's no decision he can make here that will be the right decision. Well, Obama doesn't make decisions. He waits two weeks until the deal is over, and then he says, well, uh, I'll do this. Uh, he's just not timely in his decisions. He's, not, he, he's never there at the beginning no, of something. You know what he's he always is. come lately. You know what he is? He's a shitty president. It's That's really true. what it's about. I just don't I mean, want to get in another war. Yes. Right. Yeah, but it, uh, it, it, it's it, something that seems to be inevitable right now. What? Charles, yeah. it's not another war. It's the same one. We, we yeah, just it, took a break. How come we can't afford war, we can't afford health care, but we got to do war, but we can't do health care for people? Yeah, exactly. We're, we're we can't to... even do health care for the people that are in the war. Right. Yeah, we can't even do health care for them. Yeah. Um, we, can, we don't have any money for this, but that's okay. We just got to go and drop bombs or send people and spend billions of dollars, but we can't spend some money on Americans and, and give them health care. 
Well, I wouldn't bring any boots on the ground anymore. It'd be all airstrikes. It'd be 100% drones or, uh, or, or bombers. And that's it. Let me ask you. He's, let me I, ask I say you. close down the border uh, uh, between Syria and, and Iraq, and anything that crosses that border, uh, 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 turn them into steam. Let me ask I'm, you this. I'm, I'm with that. I'm good with that. Let me ask you this. <sighs> you know, we could conceivably enter that war using nothing but drones. Okay, I think we would all agree with that now because the drone technology has gotten to a point where uh, it's capable of, of do, doing most anything. But Alex, would they have GoPros? Uh, they have better than GoPros up there. Uh, the drones he- aren't free either, you know. No, but here's the deal with the, with the drones. Is that not chicken shit war? No. It, isn't that war with no risk? Well, no. You know, no. and, and if you suddenly have war with no risk, then you'll have people going to war just for the sake of going to war. Uh, Patrick. Was bombing Hiroshima a war without risk for us? Uh, that was one of the first times where, at least at that point, we didn't have any risk. I mean, there was a risk to the airplane that it could have been shot down, but they didn't have, they didn't have the kind of weapons that could shoot a plane from that high down, okay? They could have sent up some of theirs to try and shoot it down, but they didn't know it was coming. Uh, but, but all I'm saying is, aren't drones kind of chicken shit war? Isn't that really... This is you like, don't want to have your cake and eat it, too? It, 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 you know, Miranda, it's pure science fiction, right? Um, I, next? I just don't have much of an opinion yeah, on this. I mean, next stuff. we're going to have I, robots I, out in the field, you know, and, we're, and there's going to be some guy in Arizona in a... Uh, uh, a double wide uh, with uh, is, what looks like video game paddles yeah. uh, uh, killing people. How, uh, Patrick? Yeah, I mean, let, let's put this into context uh, with were the Viet Cong fighting uh, Warsi War with all the trenches and tunnels? I mean, you fight the way that is most advantageous. Were the Native Americans Wusses when they were fighting against the French because they used guerrilla warfare. I mean, what about the Civil War when we stopped using uh, flanks and walking yeah, but, into but, each but, other? But, but in all these cases that you're mentioning, Patrick, uh, there was somebody physically there yeah, but, doing but it. Yeah, but technology has moved. I you know, mean, this could be... This, uh, this could be a very good thing. You know, we've had a lot of school shootings uh, because you get these kids playing these video games and they think they're, uh, is the word omnipotent? What? what you know? uh, uh, no, and, uh, and so uh, oh, what happens oh, is... You're going uh, there, aren't you, Phil? You're going there. You're going there, and I'm going to tell you this right now. Don't start what? up with that because well, well, I'll I, tell you it wasn't the video games. It was the fact that these kids had access to guns in the first no, place. I'm, I'm not going there. But what, what I'm saying is, is that uh, they play a lot of video games, and instead of them taking out their aggression on, on a movie theater or a school, uh, get them in the military and let them uh, you know, run those drones uh, and take out their aggression that way. That is not going to solve the problem. You know, uh, uh, it, it, These kids aren't going out and shooting up their school. Do you, do you know... That there is almost a shooting at a school a week now in this country. It's it's uh, better than the uh, their normal school attendance. Yeah, you know? I mean it, it really is. It's terrible. And, Maybe getting and, the truants and, back and, in the schools. Uh, uh, somebody wrote that really that uh, somebody should just arrest the NRA and put them on trial for murder. Well, you know, uh, responsible gun ownership means that you have a safe. Responsible gun ownership. You're going to and tell that to a 17-year-old kid who's been bullied and alienated well, from the rest look, of his the, class, the kid, and he can go defeated, down and he can go somewhere and find a gun promiscuously. The kid defeated whatever uh, uh, security that their parents had on those guns. No, and all I know no, is no, I have a no, gun. You're safe. assuming it's, that uh, the, the, the latest kid. I can't remember the one we had recently. Didn't even have his parents. Didn't even have these guns. He had them himself. Oh, that was the uh, kid with the BMW and the uh, and the 
uh, the movie? No, parents? no. This was another one just a couple of days ago. The one up in uh, up in Seattle, Oregon. Yeah, uh, he uh, he took his parents' guns and uh, uh, was able to defeat the locks that were on them. By the way, we've been uh, we've been uh, joined by Lance Eulery. You know, you're trying to blame everything else except the fact that you've got this lobbying organization that is lobbying for the promiscuous use of guns in this country, and it's pathetic. It's just pathetic. Uh, um, you know, you're blaming, a, other, you're blaming other video hand, games a, and parents who didn't lock up their guns well enough. Why not blame the fact that there's a, you know, I can go to a gun store right now and buy a gun. And I can come uh, over and blow my yeah, wife's but, head you know, off with they it. They might not give it to you. You might be on a list. <laughs> uh, I sincerely doubt it. Because the people who manage to pull these things off aren't on a list to begin with. Yeah, uh, the, know. You know, you don't get on a list until you do something. And these people are too young, many of them, to have ever done anything until they finally blew. Uh, no, Lance, I, did I you... understand. I, I, but I also, I blame drugs. Uh, I blame the, the drugs that the schools are putting these kids on, the Ritalin and, uh, and so forth. Uh, uh, why, why, you're blaming everybody but the NRA for crying no, out loud. Because they're not at fault. What do you mean they're not at fault? These are the people that lobby for the promiscuous sale of these guns. No, and, they and, don't and, and they shouldn't at that. least be bearing some of the responsibility. Uh, there, you know, when do they lobby for the promiscuous sale of guns? Uh, In th everything they do. Mm. Well, uh, uh, I'm not going to be able to uh, convince you otherwise. Yeah. But uh, you know, it, yeah. it, there's there's two sides to every story, and the no, liberals want to take so, all guns away. No, I don't agree. There are two sides to every story. Well, sometimes you know, there's right and there's wrong. Uh, and yeah. I don't think that the NRA is acting in the best interests of America and Americans. And this well, they are if you believe we, in the Constitution. And we have to do something to ban gun usage in this country. This, this, this has gone too far. Too many kids are being killed in their schools. Too many people are being killed uh, in, in movie theaters and in, 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 in <clears throat> mass shootings. I mean, the NRA can't for one moment have a certain amount of heart when a bunch of young children, uh, preschoolers, are getting killed in Connecticut? Yeah, or was it's, it, uh, where was it? This, Alex, yeah. does this mean you're not buying the gun from me? No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> Lance, Lance, you called. Did you have, want a little fight in this game? What's that? Oh, the Joe it, the Plumber said your kid's life doesn't trump my Second Amendment rights. Yeah, right. The Joe right. the Plumber is a real uh, uh, brain trust. Yeah. Uh, no, Lance, you called up. Did you want to get a little fight in the game here? Well, I don't know about fight in the game. Um, I'm just not sure that we're going to be able to do anything about about the guns. I think it's uh, whenever you do something like this, you're going to have to create a law that you can that you can enforce. Mm -hmm. I'm just not sure that it's it's going to work any better than trying to to ban drugs. Yeah. Um, uh, well, I mean, uh, we could make it more difficult to get guns. Yeah, I mean it. Well, it, I have nothing against the uh, background checks and things like that. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. I'm, I can't really imagine why the yeah the NRA is against that. It seems like if they wanted to get on the get on the bandwagon, they could actually uh, create something positive, uh, a positive image yeah. for themselves by yeah. by supporting the um, the background checks. Well, uh, you know, they, they do support the InstaCheck that uh, uh, for uh, 25 years now, uh, the, uh, the government has, has not allowed. Uh, th there was an extensive background check uh, uh, going on. I, you know, I had some friends that owned the San Francisco Gun Exchange uh, in San Francisco, and it was open for many, many years. They closed it down uh, because of the kinds of things that were happening in San Francisco, and they retired. But... Uh, they were in the forefront of trying to establish these background checks, and uh, it wasn't the NRA that didn't want it. It was the government. Uh, David, do you want any fight in this game at all? I just, I'm a speechless hearing Phil. He's like my crazy <laughs> Republican uncle. Thank He's you. got like 25, gu 25 guns. I cannot even visit him because I'm afraid to be in his house. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, you know, 
He has 25 I, guns? Yeah, he's got no. 25 What does he guns? need 25 guns for? Because he, he just loves them. <laughs> and he sounds like Phil, too. You know, he should be, I, I, he should, be, he, he would be best friend with, with Phil, you know. I hate guns, and we don't need them for everyday life. Yeah. You know, my sister lives in England, and even cops don't have guns, <laughs> you yeah. know. Yeah. And I'm sick and tired hearing, like, <clears throat> you know, that uh, about second, uh, you know, that second amendment, you know, it's bullshit. Yeah. Let me it should be changed. You know? Let me ask you, Jim something about Canada. Do, you, do your policemen carry guns on them? I know in England, the average policeman doesn't carry a gun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the RCMP are fully armed. They're fully and armed. The, the other, uh, like in Vancouver, there's also the Vancouver police. and things. Yeah, they, oh, yeah, now, they're armed. Now, how do they carry those arms? Because, you know, um, I know that at one point, didn't they used to carry them under their tunic? I guess. Because... Yeah. I, you know, having when I see cops going around wearing guns, you know, on their belt, on their, with their fat belly hanging over the belt, you know, <laughs> it's called a utility belt. Yeah, it's called a utility belt. The utility is to keep their stomach up, um, uh, and 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 they're, and they're going around like with this hog on their on their side here, and it's almost like they're looking for trouble. Yeah, so, well, uh, the RCMP and and again the other local police forces in like the Ontario Provincial Police. I mean, they're like any modern police setup. I mean, they wear their tactical vests. You know, they're they're wearing their regular trousers and and open neck shirts and and things and you know, they they've got their weapons and and all their other stuff but on do them. But they so, promiscuously but, sport those weapons is what my question is. Oh, no. I mean, no, they don't look like they don't look like uh you know the the county sheriff from uh, from the James Bond movie, yeah, you know, with the you know with the big gut and everything. But again, you guys, because of your vast population, you've also got all those different layers of 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 police involvement. You've got you've got the police, you've got like city police, and then you've got sheriffs, and you've got uh, uh, all those different mm -hmm. police levels well, it's of. It's just like Italy. Uh, you know, when you, when I went to Italy, I uh, I went and visited a police station uh, because I wanted to, and and uh, you know I wanted to learn a little bit about it. And there were four different branches of uh, of police in Italy. Uh, and uh, now it's been a while, so I don't remember what each one's name was. But uh, you know, it's it's no different uh, than what we have here, except some of their branches were military. We have we have. Like I said, you have either the RCMP, or if you're in a big city, you have the uh, like the Vancouver Police or something like that. And there is no other levels of of guys walking around enforcing the law with guns on their hips and stuff. There's no British Columbia troopers like you have nope. Texas State troopers. Nope, nothing like that. No, nope. no equivalent of FBI or uh, any of those kind of things. Yeah, there's uh, uh, CSIS. Uh, but they're more of they're more like the FBI, and you don't see them. I mean, they, they wouldn't show up unless something big happened. But again, it's it's mostly uh, it's mostly the RCMP. Yeah, and I they, got a question they, for Jim, if I may. Yeah, uh, I want to ask you, Jim. Uh, do you have any problems with illegal immigration in Canada? It's too cold. Yeah, everybody's <laughs> coming down from the North Pole. <laughs> Uh, geez, illegal immigration. Not, no, not a lot, because one of the, uh, one of the, uh, the things is, uh, Canada's a very multicultural country. That's one of our, our, our standards that we, uh, we hold up. And again, uh, where are they going to come from? You know, it's not like, it's not like we're bordering Mexico. They're not, they're not trying to get across the border, um, they so, start no. coming up from the states. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, you get the Inuits that are coming over from the Bering Straits. I'll tell you, years back, it, uh, those uh, there damn was Inuits. This period of time where these guys named Bush were elected, and there was a lot of people crossing the border <laughs> voluntarily, and and we just said, okay, come on up. You know, I mean, if you want to, if you want to hang out, fine. Uh, and too, right? So, 
Uh, yeah, come for, come for the moose, stay for the health care. I think that should be your slogan <laughs> at the border. Uh, 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 you don't own guns, do you, Rob? No, I don't have any guns. Yeah. Although I went to a gun show when I first moved here because I was so curious. Yeah. And it was like going to a flea market. Every booth you could buy the wackiest weapons. And I was just like, wow, this is well, just... You live in... Well, they sell as junk. No, there were a lot of very high-end weapons there. Yeah. No joke. I didn't see any. any cruise missiles. Didn't see any. I saw some big, big <laughs> guns, but uh, and I'm not a gun person, so I couldn't even tell you what I saw. But I was with a guy who is a gun person who would fit right in with Phil and uh, Patrick, yeah. and that he's the one that took me to this. <laughs> and uh, he was looking at some. He has, you know, adding to his collection, and uh, he was just drooling going from counter to counter to counter i i yeah i was yeah. curious so i went it's like comic-con for scary people yeah <laughs> like you see people walking in with all these different arms that they're you know you're because they're trying to trade in or whatever and leaving with these weapons and and all kinds of swords and you name it if it's a weapon it was being sold there is that where you got your lightsaber uh patrick uh, I, hey, I'm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Jim got a lightsaber, too, so. Yes, yeah. he does. Oh, wait a minute. There, he's going for his lightsaber now. Thank God this is the night we <laughs> do the video. <laughs> no, I don't have but, mine at, at uh, arm's length. Does, oh, makes, I, I'm, I'm like, in Canada. I need protection. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you do? Shove that up a moose's ass? <laughs> I get me moose steaks with this thing. <laughs> do you have a do you have a lightsaber, Patrick? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Let me. Uh, let, it's we, not near me, but uh, let, yeah. Let me bring Miranda. Let me bring See, Miranda. These, these weapons the... go across all political platforms. Yes. Now let me ask. <laughs> let me ask Miranda. Do you have a lightsaber, Miranda? I do not. Oh. Do you have? But, but do you want one? Well, she no. has. You have a Darth Vader. I do. Well, yes, I do have a Darth Vader. Uh, and he has a lightsaber. Yes, Darth Vader does have a lightsaber. So, in a way, de facto, you have a lightsaber. Not really. Darth Vader does whatever he wants. Oh, I, see. I, I, I don't have much say in it. By the way, are any of you looking forward to Episode Seven? I absolutely. I am. Uh, I, I, I mean, I'm. I'm. Look, I'm not going to be as. Uh, well, if I live long enough to see it, but I figure I've only got several months left here. Uh, I'm, How about what? I beat you before you go? How about that? Let's have a contest. Who's going to die first? I, who dies first? You oh, you're going to be around for a long time. But I'm yeah. ready. I've got the cripple thing going for me. You don't have that yet. I, I know, but, but, you got Papa. but I've got, I've got, I don't oh, know. Yeah. I, Shit. I, I've got something that's... <laughs> that, 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 I'm I'm my, my, I just haven't felt a hundred percent in the last couple of weeks, and I've said maybe this is the beginning of the end. You see, eat some chicken soup in a couple of years. What? I haven't felt a hundred percent in a couple of years. Yeah, but you're gonna outlive us all. Hey, you, you know what I did do though, uh, Alex? Yeah. Use that alabaster oil. Oh, you mean the uh, alabaster oil from? From oh, Peter Popoff. Popoff. Yes, did you, I did. Did you use it for what I suggested to use it for? I used it for even better. I put it on some toilet paper and wiped my ass with it. <laughs> <laughs> Did it stop hemorrhoids? Let's explain to people that, and, that... You know what? Because I thought, you know, a lot of my friends, they tease me. Mm -hmm. And they say, when are you going to get off your ass? And I thought, you know, it would make more sense to rub it on my ass... So that's what I did. I wiped my ass with it. Really? I should have kept the toilet paper and sent it to Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Bless this asshole. Uh, in case people are new to the program, uh, 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 Peter Popoff is a faith, faith healer who, when I was doing the radio show at Sirius, this thing has to have been going on now for almost years, a year and a half or so, right? Um, uh <laughs> Yeah, uh, we. Uh, uh, I suggested that he. You know, I saw Peter Popoff. I think one night on TV, 
and I said I thought it might be a good idea if he were to uh, to uh, write Peter Popoff and get some of these lotions and potions that this guy sends out for free. And it has never stopped, right? You, in fact, sent me a bag full of all the stuff he sent you. And uh, I can't remember, but the postage was several dollars, okay? I mean, that's how much stuff there was. And the latest thing they say he sent him was some kind of oil, and I said, why not send it to me and I'll jerk off with it? <laughs> but he decided to take the oil and put it on toilet paper and wipe his ass with it. Yep. Yep. Did that take care of the hemorrhoids? Uh, well, we'll see. I'm sure it'll take a couple of days. So I'll, I'll check in on Monday with you. Where's your silver coin? I, you know what? I still don't have that yet either. What do you mean? Are you supposed to send you a silver coin? Yeah, because I had that gold medal, uh, that genuine plastic gold medal. Yeah. So wear to bed and then, then back, and then he was sending me a silver coin. So if you sent the plastic one back, you get a silver coin. Right. So I haven't seen shit. I, I think it might be uh, a little bit shady of a deal there. Well, here's the other thing. And if you guys want to get even at any time with a faith healer, especially Peter Popoff, you do this. He, when they want money, you send it to them in a postage-paid envelope in pennies. <laughs> because what happens is their postage paid is only for a certain amount of weight. Anything over that, they have to pay for on the other end. So if we could get everybody to sell send Peter Popoff, say, a dollar's worth of pennies, right? Uh, if the guy would probably go out of business. <laughs> put some and, and that's the way for us to end this terrible, fraudulent awesome. behavior on the part of this half-baked asshole. We don't yeah. have pennies anymore. What? We don't yeah. have pennies anymore. Well, you don't have pennies anymore. No. You, you don't have them in Canada anymore? No. You got rid of the Do pennies. you have the Canadian quarter? Because we were using them in parking meters here. <laughs> <laughs> they work. Yeah, they worked all right, they were quite well. Uh, so let me see here. Uh, oh, um, uh, so uh, I, I, I want to ask Rob a question uh, just to involve him here, because sometimes you just kind of sit there enjoying it all. Well, you're, you're sitting there listening to it anyway so that you can then edit it, right? This is, yeah, this is what I tell my wife, too. <laughs> Was there anything worth saving tonight? Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, the, there's plenty here. Oh, there, there is plenty here. Oh, mm. okay. Um, by the way, last uh, thank you so much for last week's uh, uh, John Lennon. Show. Oh wow, I haven't seen you. Spoken to you since then? Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it came out. I think it came out really well. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Was, it. it was terrific. We had a lot of nice com comments on it. You raised your hand, did you, Miranda? Oh yeah. It's just I thought of something earlier when you were talking about sports. Yeah. And you were talking about the guys doing steroids and everything, and how the only people who actually care are the people who are betting on it and and i i just i didn't process it at the time but that that's just not true and so you as a fan don't like the idea that somebody might be taking some performance enhancing drug yeah and here's why because <clears throat> kids actually do look up to these people and they have to lead by example they can't uh, they they can't be cheating it, it's just it's not a good example to set for anyone and let's say everybody in baseball were on performance enhancing drugs <clears throat> all right would that if if we then leveled the playing field that way would it make it a better game no would you want your child taking these drugs because if he wouldn't if everybody was doing it Every child going into the game would be doing it because you wouldn't be able to compete otherwise. Well, I don't, this is not healthy. I'll tell you why I don't like to see people on those drugs. Uh, I'm going to sneeze any moment now, so I may have to close my microphone. Uh, uh, the uh, performance-enhancing drugs, the pr only problem with them is they're unhealthy. Right. You know, They'll kill you mm -hmm. uh, if you use them continually. Um Arnold Schwarzenegger, as an example, 
Uh, I, I, he always used to deny that he used performance-enhancing drugs. Do you know how you could tell he was on steroids? It's the they, brow. The brow. That mm -hmm. brow they get, that Neanderthal brow. Uh, and it never goes away. And I'm surprised that, you know, Schwarzenegger's still alive because he wasn't just pumping iron. He was pumping a lot of steroids into himself. And I think he's, he's admitted it <clears throat> later on in life. Um, but it, it, it's just uh, all, I, all I'm saying is the reason I felt that people were getting so insane about this. I mean, we were having congressional hearings, after all, on this, on this stuff. How else, how does it affect things? How does it affect anything that you should have a congressional hearing? Well, it affects the bottom line on making bets. Yeah. But it affects children. And it affects parents who don't want their kids to go into the sport for that reason. I wouldn't put my kid into that sport. Yeah. Uh, if that's uh, the case. Or any sport, for that matter, if you were going to allow these, these dangerous drugs. Miranda. Bottom line, performance-enhancing drugs are a shortcut. And what kind of message are we sending when we're saying it, the only way that you can can even have a chance of competing here is to take every single shortcut? You know, don't you don't have to work hard for this. All you have to do is take this special pill. You know what? When we start accepting that behavior, what is it going to say about us? Well, let's look at somebody like Barry Bonds. Okay. Uh, a great player in and of himself, okay? Mm -hmm. Used to be. Used to be. Uh, started taking performance-enhancing drugs because other people were, and if he didn't, he couldn't, he couldn't match their game no matter how good he was. So doesn't this become a matter of being able to still compete and to still be able to make money? Uh, that, that if Barry Bonds didn't take those performance-enhancing drugs, he wouldn't have been the great baseball player that he turned out to be. But is he a great baseball player if he cheated? No, I think it's more, you have to look into the psyche of people who compete. Yeah. They're yeah. looking for any yeah. edge. And, you know, it's it's a mindset that you must have to be that successful. And so imagine his thought, which is like, hey, I'm a great baseball player, but what happens if I could be that much better? And I think that's what those guys have a tendency to do. And if they're allowed to go ahead and do it, they're all going to do it. Uh, Patrick. Yeah, I, I mean, maybe I'm naive or maybe it's just the way that I was brought up and not, you know, being a competitive person in sports. But I would think somebody like Barry Bonds, as good of a player as, as he was off steroid, would have enough self-worth and enough... Um, I guess uh, circumspect to to look at the situation and say, you know, I'm this successful on my own. Um, you know, I've got a great fan base. Why would I want to risk my body with that too? And you don't know Barry Bonds, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Barry Bonds here, is one of the most a, wait a arrogant, vain individuals well, that's right, ever played I, the I, game of baseball i'm right. just using barry because we talked about oh, him. i know I'm that idiot players you know you would think at some point if you're really that great it would to me i'm trying to imagine hank aaron or babe ruth or you know yeah. them thinking that i mean i can't even i can't imagine hank aaron even if he would have never surpassed babe ruth's home run record I don't think he would have cared. You know, it, it would have been like, I gave it my best. Yeah. I, and and maybe it was a different era. Maybe, yes. like I Money. said, maybe I'm just that naive and the way I was raised. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, I never saw Hank play, but I've read many books about him. And, you know, I've seen tapes. And, uh, hell, there, there's a guy to admire who had a lot of shoes to fill. Uh, not only because he was black, but he was going after Babe Ruth's record, which stood for how long? You know, and there are people, even now, I imagine, that still do not consider uh, Hank Aaron legitimately defeating Babe Ruth's yeah. record just because they're racist. Let me jump in here. Phil had something he wanted to say, and we'll do that in a second, but I want to say goodnight to Jim Browning because he's got to go do a show. Yep, yep. Yep. And so I should let you go get ready for it. So everybody say goodbye, Jim.
Bye, Bye, Jim. Jim. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Phil. Yeah, there was a time uh, when uh, uh, performance-enhancing drugs weren't illegal for ball players to use, uh, and uh, now I'm not exactly sure what years those were, uh, but I, I do know that it uh, that it was allowed for a certain period of time. So I would imagine. Uh, there were people that were taking it then that continued to take it yeah. uh, even after it became illegal uh, because they didn't want to give up that edge. Amphetamines mm -hmm. as well was another big, like in the 60s and the 70s, it so was amphetamines. LSD. <laughs> Josh, when did, the, when did the current crop of uh, performance-enhancing drugs come about? Do you remember? Well, the, the current rule for banning most of this was in the last collective bar. Well, maybe the one before that. Within the last decade, and but specifically the, the big time testing came in the last collective bargaining agreement, which I think was maybe in like, oh nine, I yeah. think yeah. somewhere right in there. But, yeah. I th the people that it affects the most, and this, I mean, I don't care about it, but I mean the people that it affects the most are the players, mm -hmm. and they are the ones that are saying they want it out of the game. Yeah, an overwhelming amount of players and their unions say they want them out of the game so that it is a level playing field based on physical ability yeah. without help. They are the ones demanding it. But it's no wonder, longer the public it, or the Congress or anybody it, else it, is it, to play. But it, it was legal, though, for them yeah. to use. And so it... Uh, well, there, there was a time when a lot of things were legal. I don't yeah. know if they were yeah. legal or just I don't not know exactly legal. what, but... Yeah. Not banned. Yeah. Hey, listen, we're running out of time here, uh, but uh, and, and, and this certainly is a, is a subject which we could spend quite a bit of time on. Uh, but I, uh, I thank you all for being uh, uh, a part of tonight's program. It's been a good one. We've had a lot of fun for Friday night. I want to thank uh, Rob. Uh, he will be here all weekend long with uh, the Rewind shows, which we thank you a great deal for, Rob. They're terrific. Thank and you. Uh, I hope you learn that new computer language. Uh, <laughs> Mark, a slow, uh, Josh, a slow night for you, but... Uh, uh, you know, you had some pretty exciting nights the last couple of nights. Yeah, and I did a great Patrick impersonation earlier tonight, too. Yeah, so. yeah. Would you care to do that again? Flamethrower! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thanks also to Phil Meyer and to Charles Wallace and David Hadjik. We always love having you on, David. Lance, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Miranda, well, thank as you. always, good talking with you. Uh, and Patrick, you know, of course, you're our, uh, you know, you're our, uh, uh, you're our mascot. Uh, God bless you. Uh, God bless you and God bless you and God bless you. Okay. The oil is taking effect. Anyway, everybody else, hey, we'll see you again tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. Yeah.